Good afternoon, this is Seth Schuster, Regional Communications Director at the White House. Thank you all for joining today's Northeast Regional Press Briefing to discuss the importance of the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, or LIHEAP, to Americans who are struggling with costs of home winter heating. Um, a state-by-state -state breakdown of the funding should have come to your inbox, inboxes earlier today, but uh, please reach out if you haven't gotten that release. Um, today, we are joined by White House American Rescue Plan Coordinator and Senior Advisor to the President, Gene Sperling, Assi Assistant Speaker of the, House of, the, of the House of Representatives, Congresswoman Catherine Clark, House of Representatives Rules Committee Chairman, Congressman Jim McGovern, Car Congressman Peter Welch, and Congressman Chris Pappas. Following the remarks, we will open it up for some questions. And as a reminder, this briefing is on the record, but the entire call is embargoed until its conclusion. And with that, I'll hand it over to Gene. Uh, well, thank you everyone for being here. Um, I'm particularly honored to be with these particular members of Congress because they, uh, each to a person, have played uh, a true leadership role uh, on this issue uh, of, uh, of heating and, and home uh, energy costs for, for low-income and moderate um, families. Um, you know, for myself, uh, uh, coming on March 15th to be the coordinator of the American Rescue Plan, um, you know, I had been familiar with and had even advised from the outside on many uh, parts of what ended up in the American Rescue Plan. Uh, but there were certainly many elements uh, uh, in this incredibly important uh, uh, and historic American Rescue Plan um, that uh, I, like many people, learned as they passed Congress. I think as we got into this year, one of the ones that to me uh, seemed so particularly wise, uh, showed such particular foresight, uh, was the increase, um, the dramatic and historic increase in LIHEAP. Truly at a time where one would have not uh, seemed to have had a crystal ball, on uh, what our situation would be with energy costs today. But, uh, uh, you know, the people on this call, uh, you know, really uh, played leadership roles in making that happen so that as we have come to, um, as we have come to uh, the, the winter of 21 and 2022, uh, thanks to them, uh, we are much better prepared as a country to uh, help people, uh, uh, families uh, who are who who without this help uh, may have felt that much more pressed and that much more of a struggle uh, to meet their their winter home heating um, cost. Um, you know, it, it's pretty striking uh, the appropriation for this year. Uh, for LIHEAP, the average appro normal appropriation was around $3.3 billion. Uh, these, uh, these, these congressional leaders uh, had the wisdom to put in an additional $4.5 billion. So it is close to $8 billion in total. Uh, it's the largest uh, amount um, uh, for LIHEAP uh, that uh, our country's ever had. Um, and it could not have come uh, at a better time and wouldn't have come without uh, uh, the leadership that, that and foresight, again, uh, that they showed. Um, so again, $8 billion in a single fiscal year is the largest since the program was established in 1981. Um, in addition to that, you know, today we announced the November results for the Emergency Rental Assistance Program. This was a brand new program that also came out of the American Rescue Plan. Because it was brand new and people were starting up programs in over 400 states and jurisdictions, uh, you know, it, it would, it, there were struggles in startup costs uh, in, in startup. But today, for November, we announced 665,000 uh, uh, rent, rental families received assistance, just a, a, a striking amount, 2.9 billion went out. And it is important to know that that money is eligible and is being used not only to pay the back arrears, uh, rental arrears to help landlords 
and agree to, to have tenants stay in their home, prevent homelessness, have housing security, prevent eviction. But that funds also addresses utility costs as well. When you put the emergency rental assistance and LIHEAP uh, together, uh, we really are uh, as well positioned uh, uh, as we uh, 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 could imagine being thanks specifically to the American Rescue Plan and again to these, um, uh, these increases. And again, this was done with the foresight of not knowing exactly where things were going to be done this year. You know, today uh, the, uh, the Biden administration released what those numbers actually look like state by state. So for example, Massachusetts, which is being represented here quite well, you know, is receiving three uh, uh, 107.5 billion, 187 million of that is from the American Rescue Plan, 187 million. New Hampshire is receiving 60.7, 35.5 million from the American Rescue Plan and Vermont, 45.5 million, including 26.6 million from the American Rescue Plan. So their efforts have led for their own states, but most importantly, for really all 50 states, a more than doubling of the resources available just in LIHEAP, and far more than that when one considers the potential utility help relief for low and moderate income renters through the emergency um, rental assistance. We, uh, worked as an administration to bring together governors to do a series of consultations with the people who run the LIHEAP and ERA programs to make sure that people were ready, using best practices, coordinated, uh, uh, and that, you know, again, coordinating these new streams of funds, none of these states or cities had ever had to try to coordinate utility relief from a emergency rental program and LIHEAP uh, at the same time. And I think there's been a very strong response. We also at that time put out what we felt was a series of best practices that we asked utilities to live up to, which included uh, uh, you know, how they worked with uh, and shared information in terms of uh, getting out both LIHEAP and emergency rental assistance dollars um, and you know, including um, uh, you know, a commitment uh, to not uh, do shutoffs during this uh, difficult winter uh, for people who are in the pipeline and participating in these programs. And we're very happy that 14 utilities, including several utilities that are serving the states of New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Vermont, have stepped up and made that commitment, and we hope uh, um, uh, more will. Um, you know, their commitment was to proactively identify customers who might be eligible for LIHEAP or ERA, proactively inform customers of energy assistance, uh, proactively work to speed out the distribution, um, and as I said, commit to placing a hold on any utility shutoff when a company is notified the customer is applying for either of these financial hardship programs. I will also mention that state and local money that was part of the American Rescue Plan that each of these members helped lead and pass is also available and has been used by some states and cities as well. Um, so um, with that, uh, um, um, I want to... Um, you know, again, thank uh, uh, Congress, Congressman Pappas, Congressman Welch, uh, Chairman McGovern, uh, 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 the Congressman, Congresswoman and, and Assistant Speaker Catherine Clark for being here. Uh, a couple of people here I have worked with for a long time on different issues over more than one decade. Uh, I really appreciate it. But your foresight and leadership here has just helped millions of people. And we're going to make life better for millions of people this winter. We're not satisfied. There's more to do. Uh, but, I'm, but thank you for joining us uh, for what you did to pass this, most of all, and for joining us in this effort uh, on this call today and in the efforts we will take together to push uh, to do more uh, as we go forward. So with that, let me uh, turn it over to uh, uh, Congresswoman and Assistant Speaker, uh, Catherine Clark, the floor is yours. 
Oh, well, thank you so much and good afternoon to everyone on the call and thank you especially to the White House for bringing us together to discuss how we are lowering energy costs for American families. And a special thanks to Eugene for all your incredible efforts to implement this historic American Rescue Plan, as well as to my colleagues joining today's call, Chairman Jim McGovern, Congressman Peter Welch from Vermont and Congressman Chris Pappas from New Hampshire. These members are champions for ensuring everyone can afford to heat their homes. And as a member of the New England delegation and the Appropriations Committee, Funding for LIHEAP has always been a priority. And with the winter months comes the reality that too many families are forced to choose between their heating bills and eating or paying other bills. The Home Energy Assistance Program provides financial support to low-income families that helps them stay warm and stay safe. And as this pandemic, has continued to spike energy costs, more families are struggling to make ends meet. And to help meet this growing need, President Biden led and congressional Democrats delivered the American Rescue Plan that, as Jean already mentioned, has more than doubled LIHEAP funding, adding four and a half billion dollars to the annual appropriation. In total, my home state of Massachusetts will be receiving over $307 million for heating assistance, the highest level of LIHEAP funding the Commonwealth has ever received. And for the average family receiving this assistance, this means an additional $400 in financial support. Furthermore, the American Rescue Plan provides states and localities with over $21 billion in funding to help renters with past due utility bills and ongoing assistance with energy costs to avoid shutoffs, stay current on expenses, and stay safe. These programs are about ensuring the dignity and health of all Americans. And I am immensely proud to partner with the White House and my colleagues to lower costs for families. Our message to the American people is clear. We see the challenges you face and we are meeting them with real solutions. Lower costs, lower taxes, and a stronger economy that supports the stability and success of every family. And now I'd like to pass the virtual mic to my friend and colleague, Chairman Jim McGovern. Jim, we can't hear you. How's that? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Let me start again. Um, first of all, Catherine, thank you. And I'm proud to serve with you. And I also um, am proud to serve with Peter Welsh and Chris Pappas. I want people on this call to understand that we in the New England delegation, we work as a team um, and uh, we look at the entire region. Uh, and I think it has been helpful, uh, not just to Massachusetts, but to New Hampshire and Vermont uh, as well. And thank you, Gene. Uh, and, you know, uh, we are, we appreciate your leadership. We are glad you are where you are, uh, and uh, thanks for helping to organize this call. I'm going to get to LIHEAP in one second, but first, I just want to highlight uh, the December jobs report that was released today because I think it's a big deal. Uh, you know, when President Biden took office, the unemployment rate stood at 6.4 percent, uh, and thanks to his leadership um, in partnership with Democrats uh, in the House and Senate, America's unemployment rate hit 3.9 percent, year, uh, years ahead of expectations. It was the sharpest one-year drop in unemployment in American history. 84 percent of jobs lost during the pandemic have now been regained. Uh, and we know so much of that progress is due to the American Rescue Plan that we all supported and worked very hard uh, to get passed over Republican obstructionism. And thanks to the American Rescue Plan, uh, as has been announced, Massachusetts will receive a, a, a LIHEAP allocation of over $300 million uh, for this fiscal year. Uh, and that is a game changer. 
I cannot underscore how huge this is. Uh, it is more than double our normal LIHEAP funding. And I also want to take a second to recognize someone not on this call who um, has been important in this fight, and that's Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro of Connecticut. Uh, together, we help make sure that LIHEAP funding is more equitably distributed among states. Uh, and I'm proud that because we led that fight to change the formula, New England will be receiving more money here than we otherwise would have. Um, and finally, um, I want to talk uh, about who this mean, what this means for families in my district. No family should have to choose between paying their energy bills or paying for other necessities such as food or medicine during dangerously cold days. But too many families in the second uh, congressional district have to make that awful choice. Too many families lose sleep because they're thinking about uh, uh, what they're going to do, how they're going to survive when their utilities uh, get shut off. And that's why I also want to commend the White House for working with us to call on utility companies to prevent devastating utility shutoffs and help expedite uh, the delivery uh, of federal aid here in Massachusetts. Um, like my colleagues on this call, um, I, um, uh, my, my constituents put up with frigid winters and nobody should walk into their own home um, and be able to see their own breath because they had to choose between heating and eating. Uh, nobody should have to make that choice. It's, it's, in, it's immoral. And so when you talk to the organizations that distribute the money, uh, they have to make heartbreaking choices about who gets heating assistance because they can't help everybody. Um, and I'm grateful for the um, incredible work of the community action agencies and particularly the staff of the community action agencies that do so much to try to make sure that families in need get the help that, uh, that quite frankly, they deserve. Uh, and uh, so, again, I want to recognize President Biden for making this historic investment that will really make such a difference for low-income families. It will make a difference for senior citizens and for veterans in Massachusetts and throughout New England who rely on the support of LIHEAP to heat their homes. Uh, and so let me, at this point, uh, turn the program over to my colleague from Vermont, uh, who I've had the honor of serving with on the Rules Committee at, at, for a period of time, but who is somebody I admire greatly, uh, Congress, Congressman Peter Welsh. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jim. I want to th also thank the White House. Uh, and Jean, you've been doing tremendous work for years, uh, and my colleagues, uh, Catherine and, and, uh, uh, and Chris. Uh, Number one, it is really important to emphasize the progress that's being made uh, because COVID is wearing us all down. It really is tough. Uh, and especially in Vermont, we've got vaccines in our arms and uh, we're up to 95% vaccination, but we're still having an explosion of cases with Om Om Omicron. Uh, and it's wearing folks down and we've got to hang in there. And uh, the fact that there are really positive things uh, really cutting the unemployment rate in half. People have jobs uh, that uh, we're going back to work, that we're confident uh, that with all the vaccinations that are out there, we're going to start bringing uh, that infection rate down. But COVID has had impacts in where emotional impacts on everyone. But folks who don't have money in the stock market uh, have seen the cost of the necessities increase and they don't have an upside because the folks that are going to be receiving the benefit of LIHEAP don't have the way to pay the bill to heat their home. And it's cold here in Vermont right now. And uh, that is a level of insecurity. You can see your breath in, in your home, as uh, Jim McGovern said, and just think you're a disabled person or you're taking care of a disabled person or you're a mom or dad, mom and dad, and you're taking care of young kids and they're not only uh, hungry, but they're pretty cold. So the necessity of having this supplement in our funding for LIHEAP is absolutely existential for so many of our Vermont families. And thanks to the combination of the funding and the ARPA money, we're going to have $45 million in Vermont. That's the largest. That's the largest amount we've ever had. Over 39,000 Vermonters are absolutely dependent on this funding, uh, seniors especially. And in Vermont, one in three, one in three of our citizens struggle uh, with paying the bill uh, for home heating. 
So this is absolutely vital. Uh, it comes at a time when the margin within a family, both economically and emotionally, with uh, us battening down the hatches to try to get through COVID, uh, this is a moment when the need is especially great, as I say, financial and emotional. So I want to thank uh, the, uh, the White House and I want to thank uh, my colleagues uh, for the determination to not force people to make this choice between heating and eating. Uh, thank you very much. Well, thanks, Peter. I think I'll pick it up from there and then we'll turn it back over to the moderator to see if there are any questions. But I want to thank my colleagues from the New England delegation for your longstanding commitment to uh, helping bring more resources to families who need it in our region and all across the country who are struggling to pay the bills. Nothing could be more important as we enter these tough winter months. And thanks as well to Gene Sperling for your leadership uh, and to the White House. Uh, for helping to leverage these resources for families in my district and across the country. Um, we know that cold and snow is part of our way of life in New England. We're seeing that today. Uh, but we also know that the winter months bring hardship for a lot of our families. And so as we enter these cold days, we know that heating homes and being able to afford home heating oil is a critical concern to so many of our families especially lower income individuals and families who are struggling with increased prices over last year. So that's why these funds through the LIHEAP program and the American Rescue Plan are just going to be so crucial to making sure that people can pay the bill, make ends meet, and stay healthy and stay strong through the winter. Each year, New Hampshire LIHEAP provides assistance to more than 30,000 households um, we have an annual appropriation of about $25 million, which, as Gene indicated, uh, is going to be increased by $35 million because of the American Rescue Plan dollars. That's a significant increase and is really going to help families uh, who need it most. The additional funding has allowed our state to be able to increase support for home heating assistance to families by about 60% this winter. So that's welcome news to um, residents and families here. In my state, our CAP agencies administer the program to get funding out to communities. I actually had a round table a few weeks ago with our CAP uh, agency leaders who were talking about uh, getting folks to apply. Uh, they've seen a large volume of folks filling out applications and already receiving assistance. Um, our largest CAP agency is Southern New Hampshire Services. They do about 12,000 applications for assistance a year, and they've seen an increase over that this year, and also an increase in the need, um, not just for fuel assistance, but for help paying electric bills too. Um, I talked to another CAP agency in my district who remarked on uh, the number of folks that she hears from who are keeping their homes at 40 or 50 degrees during the winter months. We're talking about people uh, who are elderly, who are disabled, uh, parents with kids at home, we know that's not a safe and healthy environment for these individuals. So this funding couldn't come at a more important time for Granite Staters. It's really going to allow our uh, local community action agencies uh, to get this help where it needs to go. And so I would just urge anyone uh, in my district to reach out to their local CAP uh, to get connected with assistance. So thanks again to everyone for being a part of this call and helping to uh, get these resources where it's going to make a difference. And I'll turn it back over uh, to the moderator. Thanks, Congressman Pappas. Now we'll take some time for questions. Um, if you have a question, please uh, click the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen and you'll be added to the queue. I'll give you a few seconds to do that and then we can open it up. We'll first go to Angie Gonzalez. Hi, guys. Um, specifically, I wanted to reach out to um, Representative Clark and Representative McGovern because I specifically um, cover Massachusetts. Was there a reason that you two ended up on this um, specific, you know, call but effort to make sure that there um, was enough money for families this year? Is there something specific about Massachusetts that you think is uh, going to benefit from this extra money in the program? You want to go ahead, Jim? Go ahead, Catherine. I'll, I'll... 
Okay. Uh, thank you so much for the question. And, uh, you know, uh, LIHEAP has been important to me since I first served in the state legislature because we have uh, a cold days, snowy days like today, and we also have high costs of energy in the best of times, never mind uh, following a uh, pandemic and, uh, and what that's done to um, our global markets. So this is critical to families at home. And um, I am so grateful to this administration for their leadership and help in framing the American Rescue Plan and looking um, in a holistic way at what we needed to do to get uh, base staters and families across the country the help and the relief they needed. And I think that Massachusetts is one of those states where our high cost of living um, really necessitates this investment in American families and lowering their costs to help them uh, get back on their feet and stay warm and secure this winter. And, and I'll just, you know, let me associate myself with the remarks of, of Catherine. I mean, she uh, stated it very succinctly. But look, we have every, every year, uh, not just Catherine and I, our delegation, the New England delegation, we fight like hell uh, for adequate LIHEAP uh, funding in the appropriations process. And then we oftentimes have to, we, we fight for, you know, supplemental emergency appropriations because what has been allocated is not enough. Um, families in Massachusetts um, oftentimes have to face this difficult challenge between putting food on the table or heating their homes. Um, and uh, with this additional allocation that's being announced today, we want to again thank President Biden uh, for his leadership on the American Rescue Package, but hopefully fewer families will have to make that decision. You know, I spent a lot of time working on issues of hunger and food insecurity. We have a hunger problem in this country, um, and it's exacerbated <laughs> by things like high energy costs. Uh, and so, um, so this is a big deal. I said it in my opening remarks, this is a huge deal for Massachusetts. It's a huge deal for New Hampshire. It's a huge deal uh, for, uh, for Vermont. Uh, and so um, you know, this is who we are. I mean, these are the programs we go to bat for every year. And, um, and again, it's not just Catherine, Catherine and myself, it's our entire delegation and it's the entire New England delegation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I, you know, Haley. Oh. I, I just also wanted to point out, you know, these particular members on the phone. Um, for me, looking back at the history of this, I look to a January 29th letter that was from uh, 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 Sent Congressman McGovern and Welch January 29th, as the package was just being together. That was both Speaker Pelosi and uh, Minority Leader McCarthy specifically asking for um, this letter. So January, that was January 29th, 2021, just as this was uh, um, uh, being um, uh, happening. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, Congresswoman Clark uh, just uh, just before the break, uh, uh, led a, a bicameral letter to HHS, uh, also asking for more actions on these. And Representative Pappas uh, was one of the key uh, signers of a letter to the president um, on a variety of issues, including this. So, you know, I think each person here has been a particular leader uh, on this issue. And uh, uh, again, I think that January 29th letter was to me, one of the real instigations at the beginning for this uh, uh, for this inclusion in the American Rescue Plan. We'll next go to Haley Fuller, Boston Globe. Hi. Um, so this is directed at Representatives McGovern and Clark again. Um, but I was wondering, do you have the data on either percentage or number of Massachusetts households that have received this assistance in the past? and that are expected to receive it this year? I don't have it off hand, but I, I, we, we can get that to you. I mean, that's, that's uh, unless Catherine has it. Um, I, I don't have it in front of me, but we'd be happy to we follow, have, we'll, up we'll, we'll follow up with you on that. Great, thank you so much. But can I just say, in the past, you know, the, the, um, 
uh, the the demand has always outweighed yeah. the money that has been available uh, to provide assistance. Uh, and so that is why we are so um, happy that the American Rescue Package um, has this additional $300 million um, from Massachusetts. But we'll get you the statistics. Yeah, and I, I just want to follow up a little bit on um, what Congressman McGovern just said, because one of the problems with as these funds get low for people who are still using oil to heat their homes, we can't do a partial delivery. And so it really does become a crisis. And having this additional funding up front that people, um, and especially the agencies that help implement uh, the LIHEAP funding, um, it, this will make a huge difference and will make um, a much smoother uh, uh, way to deliver this assistance to families in need. We'll now go to Sarah Rose Brenner, WBUR. Hi, actually, it's Dave Fanner for WBUR taking uh, Sarah Rose's place today. Um, just quickly, I would love that data as well. Uh, right. If you could email it out, over to us. I, I did speak with some CACs yesterday, and one of the things that struck me in the conversation was the lag time between uh, the announcement of money is coming and the money actually getting there. So what, what are we looking at for lag time before agencies like ABCD can actually get the funds? Or maybe. Jean, do you have uh, yeah. any updated maybe information? How quick the money will get out? Well, the, the, uh, the money flows to the state. And, and so it really is for the, uh, uh, state at this point to uh, uh, do the distribution, uh, but I'm happy to I'm happy to check um, check as well. Yeah, we're happy to follow up on that. I think we have time for one more question, uh, and we'll go to John Salant, New Jersey Advance Red, New Jersey Advance Media. Excuse me. Thank you. Hi, thank you for uh, for doing this call. Uh, I don't, none of you came from my, uh, from, from my state, though I have talked to Peter Welsh about drug prices and Jim McGovern about several rules for the Rules Committee. Uh, the question I have for any of the, the lawmakers, uh, yeah, as we know, you know, prices, energy prices are still high, no indication how much they will drop going on, Has already, been, and you're doing the appropriations bills for next year as we speak. Any talk about trying to make sure that there is extra money like this, like in the American Rescue Plan, for the next fiscal year, for next winter, in case uh, prices stay high. Peter, you're on uh, mute. Yeah. I, I was just saying that I think everybody on this group is committed every year to assessing the reality of the situation that families face. And obviously higher prices means that the set amount of LIHEAP money goes, uh, it doesn't go far enough. Uh, so we don't know what the future will be, uh, but we'll be prepared to advocate for funding to make certain families here secure. I suspect I speak for all of us on that. Uh, just, just on the last question, this is Gene. The uh, American Rescue Plan money actually went to states in uh, you know, in, in April, May of this year, and then the normal appropriation amount went out in November. So funds are at the state level. So you'd have to ask at a more uh, gubernatorial level, uh, you know, issues on the distribution. But but the money from both the um, American Rescue Plan amount and the normal appropriation amount has been distributed by HHS to the to to all of the states. And Jonathan, let me let me just say that uh, I think again I speak for everybody here. We're going to do all we can to make sure that the next appropriation cycle uh, includes as much as uh, humanly possible to uh, to support the LIHEAP program. Uh, and um, you know, in the past, when we've had divided Congresses uh, and we've had different people in the White House, um, it's been awful. It's been sometimes very difficult to get them to appreciate the importance of programs like LIHEAP. Uh, LIHEAP. These programs. Uh, 
you know, are, are, are you know, literally uh, prevent, help prevent families from having to make the difficult choice between heating their homes or eating. Uh, and so, um, so we're going to, this will be a major uh, you know, focus for all of us, um, you know, uh, whether it's Chris or, or Peter or Catherine or myself. Um, so, um, and, and, you know, to the extent that we can continue this in the future, I don't want to get political, but I mean, you, I think it's important that there, that there be uh, people in Congress who actually understand what this program does and why it is so important. Um, and how many families, uh, working families uh, rely on this, as well as senior citizens and veterans. Uh, so um, so we're, we're rolling up our sleeves and we're ready to get to work on the next appropriation. Like we, we, want, we want to make sure we pass the last uh, set of pa uh, bills as well. Uh, and we're hoping to get to that, uh, you know, in the coming month. So I yield back. Thank you. I think we do have time for one more question. I see Melissa Burke from the Detroit News has had her hand up for a long time, so I will let uh, Melissa, go, and then we'll wrap, and I'll encourage anyone else who has a follow-up question to shoot me an email, and we'll be happy to work through it offline. Hi, Melissa, thanks. Course. Thanks. I appreciate it. I actually, I think that the, the last question, actually, uh, Jean just addressed. What, what, I was just trying to clarify that this was money. Sorry, this was the the the, the ARP uh, supplemental that went to the states last May or last summer. And then the regular allocation that was in November. So basically, all this money has already gone to the states, and they can use it what through the end of fiscal 2022. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, I believe you have to use 90. I, I should double check with you. I believe you have to have used 90 percent by by the end of the um, uh, by the end of the fiscal year. So this this would this would still be. Uh, funds that could uh, beyond the winter be used, uh, uh, you know, for for those places that uh, face um, heating challenges. Uh, you know, clearly Michigan, you know, is, is had among the more innovative uh, uh, pr proposals. Uh, I mean, you know, distribution. Um, and in terms of, you know, just to, to emphasize what uh, Chairman McGovern was saying, you know, this is the, this is the most ever. But it does not cover all those who could be eligible. And when you're asking about, you know, the questions about how many people are going to get it, I think every state is looking at the issue of expanding the number versus also deepening the cost, deepening the payments for those who have higher costs. And so one of the reasons we encourage people to look at the emergency rental assistance, that if some of the people could get help through that who were renters, perhaps that would allow more funds for homeowners. But all of the, the, the states here uh, and the caps that distribute, et cetera, you know, all have to make some level of decisions between broadening the numbers uh, that, you know, and I think most of them are both broadening the numbers, but a lot of them are also uh, expanding the costs for those who are going to face higher than normal uh, heating costs over the um, uh, over the winter. Could could I uh, follow up there? With, could you speak to why Michigan had such an innovative proposal? Well, no, I think they they've had a a a, a, a strong uh, plan. But let me um, um, uh, I, I, I will I will I can call you back to go over. Uh, but um, in our initial fact sheet that went out, uh, they were uh, one of the places. Uh, uh, that we that we highlighted, and, and Governor Whitmer was one of our participants um, uh, on on the call that we did in November. So let me let me get that for you. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining this call this afternoon. Thank you to our wonderful participants. Uh, take care and have a good one. And stay warm. <laughs>